Cool Contraption Guy with Tom Fox, workshop editor for Boys Quest and Fun for Kids magazines, presents... The purpose of this video is to provide an intuitive and down-to-earth explanation on how a capacitor is able to store electrical charge and thus electrical energy. Before we show how a capacitor does this, we will again show a brief demonstration on what a capacitor does and how you yourself can make a capacitor. What does a capacitor do? Here are three one ferret capacitors connected in series. And here is a small light bulb. I connect the leads to the light bulb and as you see nothing happens. Next, I connect the capacitor to the 6 volt battery to charge it up. Okay, now I again connect the light bulb to the capacitor. As you can see, the capacitor now is charged up. Remember the question? It was this. What does a capacitor do? Well, as you just saw, a capacitor stores electrical energy. While this is true, a better way of saying the same thing is that a capacitor stores up electrical charge. We now show how to make a simple capacitor. First we put a sheet of aluminum foil down that has a wire tape to it. Then as an insulating layer we use a piece of waxed paper. This is also called the capacitor's dielectric. Then we finally put a piece of aluminum foil on which has another wire taped to it. And this is our capacitor and we sh the two wires are the leads for this capacitor. This is the first of five drawings we will show which help explain how a capacitor stores electrical energy. Here in figure one this is the capacitor. It consists of these two plates. By the way in the homemade capacitor we just showed in the video clip these plates are the two sheets of aluminum foil. Well these plates here are shown are relatively thick. This is only so I can draw the plus and minus charges in them. The extra plates are usually much thinner than the thinnest aluminum foil you can buy. In between the plates is the insulating layer referred to as the dielectric. Here it is shown in light greenish yellow. In a homemade capacitor the dielectric is the wax paper. Here is a 6 volt battery. This is a switch which when up as shown doesn't allow electricity to flow. This here is a three digit digital voltmeter whose probes are connected to the two plates of our capacitor here. Now notice the voltmeter shows 0.00 volts. Keep in mind that a voltmeter simply measures the difference in voltage that exists between its probes. What zero volts means is that the charge on both capacitor plates is the same, so there's no voltage difference between them. The drawing shows that there is the same charge on both plates. Since there are equal number of plus and minus circles on both plates, this means that the charge is also zero on both plates. By the way, the blue circles represent electrons which are negative charges. These electrons also are referred to as free electrons here since they can easily move around the conductive plates. By the way, the ease that electrons can move about in something is the reason why that something conducts electricity. What are the positive charges? Basically they are protons, which along with neutrons are located in the center which is the nucleus of atoms. However, for several reasons, including the fact that protons are 2,000 times more massive than electrons, protons don't move around much. As this drawing indicates, the capacitor is discharged. This can be determined from either the voltmeter's reading or looking at the charges on the plates. In figure 2, we will show the conditions while the capacitor is charging. Figure 2 here shows the switch closed. This allows current to flow into the capacitor. It is assumed here 
that the switch was closed just moments ago. The voltmeter reading of 4.79 volts implies that the capacitor is nearly fully charged. Notice there is current flow taking place with the negative charges of electrons traveling from the negative terminal of the battery through a wire, then through the switch, and then through the other wire and onto the left plate of the capacitor. Also, and this is very important, the electrons from the right plate flow through another wire and back into the positive terminal of the battery. Notice no charges actually flow through the capacitor even though the negative charges flow into the capacitor's left plate through a wire and negative charges also flow from the capacitor's right plate and through another wire. What is happening is that charges are building up on the capacitor plates. Negative charges on the left plate and positive charges on the right plate. While the left plate becomes negatively charged and the right plate positively charged, there is no net buildup of charges in the capacitor itself since the total number of negative charges and positive charges always remain equal in the capacitor. The thing that changes is that, is that when the capacitor is discharged, the negative and positive charges on each plate are equal. However, when a capacitor is charged, not even fully charged, charged any amount, one plate has many more electrons on it than the other plate, so it becomes negatively charged. This means the other plate must become positively charged in order for both the charges on the total in the total capacitor to remain the same. Figure three here shows the fully charged condition of the capacitor with the battery still connected. Notice the switch is still closed. While the battery is connected, there is no current flowing. Why? Because the capacitor now has reached the same voltage, 6 volts, as the battery. Notice the electrons are now on the surface of the left plate. They are being strongly attracted to the other positively charged plate. I don't show the positive charges moving much since they need much more force to move than electrons. Despite protons being stick in the muds, the positive charges do appear to move to the right because the left plate's negative charges have repelled electrons, which leaves only protons, positive charges there. Remember, when you put one positive charge together with one negative charge, you get something with no charge. Keep this in mind. A plus one plus a minus one equals zero. And then from this no charge something, you kick out an electron, you wind up with a positively charged something, which means the net charge is now positive. Keep this in mind. If you don't add a minus one to a plus one, you have a plus one anyway. Figure four here is probably the most interesting of the five figures we are showing today. Here the switch is open, which is basically the same thing as taking the battery out of the circuit. And yet, the voltmeter shows 6 volts. You might ask what is going on? This feature of capacitors that can actually store electrical energy is a feature that makes it so useful. You might wonder just how a capacitor can actually store electricity while much more sophisticated electronic devices such as CPUs which make up the heart of computers can't. Well it has to do with the simple fact that positively charged particles attract negatively charged particles and vice versa and they do it with enormous force. Here is a quick related thought problem that might help explain it. Say you want to store a pile of rocks. What do you do? One common way is just pile them up in a yard and you can be pretty assured that if you come back in a year or even 10 years, rocks will still be piled up. Why can you be so sure of that? Well, think about it. It's basically because the rocks are attracted strongly by gravity and they just as strongly attract the earth, so unless an earthquake happens those rocks will be there until someone actually gets out there and moves them. The same is true for the electric charge and capacitors. 
The next short video will demonstrate this even better using two magnets. For a down-to-earth demonstration on why a capacitor stays charged, let's make use of refrigerator magnets which are used for putting notes and stuff on refrigerators. Notice how these attract each other. It is interesting to note that not every two refrigerator magnets attract each other. Only the different colored ones do. These are the different colored ones. For instance, these two, which have the same color, don't attract each other. In fact, they do repel each other. What happens is that magnets have two poles, north and south. Like poles repel and unlike attract. This is no problem with fridge magnets because both are attracted to the steel in the refrigerator door. These magnets are analogous to electric charges where light charges repel and unlike charges attract. Now we take this cardboard and think of it as the insulation or dielectric in a capacitor which separates the two charged plates. Now look what happens when we take the two magnets with unlike poles. Here unlike colors. They seem to stick to the cardboard like that because they are pressing on it since they are being attracted to each other with considerable force. The magnets will stay that way for perhaps years this is the same basic reason charges on the plates of a capacitor stay there even when the battery is removed. Now getting back to the drawings, the only difference between figure 5 here and the last drawing, figure 4, is that this drawing shows a wire connected between the two plates of the capacitor. Now the electrons in the left plate move through the wire to the right plate which removes the excess positive charge on the right plate since there is the same number of positive and negative charges on the right plate. While it is an obvious from the drawing, the movement of the excess negative charge away from the left plate results in a plate with the same number of positive and negative charges and thus the left plate, like the right plate, no longer is charged and so the voltage, as shown by the voltmeter, is zero. The capacitor is now totally discharged. Thanks for watching. In episode 6 of this series, Electricity Mysterious Yet Useful, we will show and tell more about the electron and electricity and introduce the most common electronic part there is, the resistor.